Acquiring skills for accurately attributing numismatic varieties. This video is the fifth in a series of videos which are intended to assist the coin variety collector to acquire the skills necessary to accurately attribute numismatic varieties. Die markers. What is a die marker? A die marker, also referred to as a pickup point, can be any feature on a coin, that feature having been created by a die, and which will be a consistent feature on all coins created with that die. Die markers allow for the exact matching of varieties on a coin to known already attributed varieties. Varieties can appear similar to one another, but to pinpoint which exact variety that a coin displays, matching die markers will confirm or rule out a match for that variety on that coin. <clears throat> die markers also allow for matching a variety on a coin to a particular die stage for that matching variety. What is not a die marker? Condition of and anomalies on the blanks prior to entering the minting process are not die markers. Laminations, clip planchants, machine, mechanical, or strike doubling are not die markers. Strike through, such as struck through grease, debris, or dropped letters, scratches on the coin, other post mint damage are not die markers. They are not consistent features from coin to coin made with the same die. Mint mark position. Mint mark positions are not simply good for attributing repunched mint marks. They are also valuable in attributing double dies as well. Mint mark position can be determined by comparing the distances between the mint mark and the numerals in the date in a horizontal position from east to west of the mint mark under the date. Here in this image, imaginary lines have been drawn between the devices indicating the distances or the areas to be examined when determining mint mark position. Some denominations of coins have mint marks that are not near the date. These mint marks positions will have to be determined using other nearby devices of the coin. Here's an example of what my computer screen would look like when I'm comparing mint mark positions side by side. Here I'm using the known already attributed variety, comparing the mint mark positions of the between the date and the mint mark. Here is my a snapshot from my microscope of the date and the mint mark and a close up of the mint mark with a little bit of the date showing. It is not necessary to draw physical lines either on your computer or on a piece of paper or anything. It's a matter of maybe using your pointer to do a straight line along these same areas to judge between your coin and the known variety. Here's a closer examination of the comparison. Using my mouse pointer, I'll draw a straight line and compare where this line meets the edge of the nine and meets the top of the D. Is it similar here and do they meet at the same place here? Does this angle or this distance here similar? And then the edges of the mint mark, where do they meet up on the digits above in the date? In doing comparisons like this, it is best to have the zoom amount the same between the known variety and your image.
Comparing mint mark positions side by side, here's an example of doing that. Some positions can be very similar and difficult to discern. Mint mark position and mint mark features can uh, they go in parallel as the first die markers to check when attributing repunched mint marks. Here you need to examine the features of the mint mark. And then compare where your mint mark is in relation to the date on the penny. Detecting die markers. Some die markers, such as die abrasions, can be obscured by the condition of the coin, conditions such as toning or corrosion or post mint damage. Some die markers can be undetected by microscope imaging and lighting. When microscopes cannot reveal any die markers, the coin should be examined with manual mag magnification and tilted and rotated beneath a good light source. Some varieties are so obvious that matching die markers, some or all, is not necessary. Such varieties can speak for their own authenticity. When attributing less obvious varieties and unable to discern matching die markers, setting the coin aside until another example can be obtained to compare the two coins and check the die markers that may not have been shown in the reference listings for that variety. With experience, this method can allow for determining your own die markers and subsequent matching of the variety. Combinations of die markers from listed references and personal detections of die markers between two physical coins can lend confidence in attributing that variety accurately. That second coin may reveal die markers matching the listed reference as well. Knowing what is not a die marker is important when determining die markers in this way. When attributing less obvious varieties and un unable to discern matching die markers, such coins can be stored and labeled as unknown, uncertain, or questionable. Here's an example of the computer screen when comparing a coin to a known variety. This is the microscope area and the coin can be manipulated beneath the microscope. Here's a snapshot taken with the microscope of just the mint mark and zoomed in to have a, a, an example of just a mint mark. This is the reference online reference page. This is coppercoins.com and I found a, a variety that would match this and I compared the two. Here's the mint mark position looking similar and the features of the mint mark are identical. Types of die markers. There are intentional die damage such as die abrasions. <clears throat> These are caused by abrasive tools used to refurbish the dies. Here we have examples of die abrasions on the same coin. This is a zoomed in version of the same coin with, of these die abrasions here. This is a second coin with less obvious die abrasions and very different. Here we're comparing the die abrasions on the two different coins. And these are the zoomed in images of those die abrasions on the two different coins. Unintentional die damage. Things such as die scratches, gouges, chips, dents, dots, and clashes. Here are examples of die scratches die gouge and a die chip. These will be consistent features on the coin made from the same die.
die dance and die dots. Example of die dots, this would be a die dent in a company with a dot. A die clash, or in this case, remnants of a die clash here on the left, also accompanied by the die abrasions where they would try to remove the entire clash but failed. This is a tilted die clash on the back of a 1960 small date scent. Unintentional die damage, such as die breaks. Die breaks come in the form of die cracks, interior die breaks, cuds, or shattered dies. Here's an example of a die crack and an interior die break with a zoomed in image of the, what that looks like. Here are die breaks on the back of a Lincoln Memorial scent. Die breaks in the form of cuds Here's a cud on the rim. Here's a rim cud on the obverse here. And here's a cud at the base of, of the bust on a 1966 Lincoln scent. Die state. Die state describes the resulting condition of the die over time due to usage and wear. Die markers will remain the same, however, they can become weaker and as the die wears. The state of a die can change, but the die stage may or may not remain the same. Other variables can contribute to changing die stages. Die stage. Die stages describe the condition of the die resulting from damage, where previously die state was a result of, from die wear. Intentional damage from refurbishing the die, as mentioned previously, as well as unintentional die damage and die breaks, also mentioned previously. Examples of descriptions of typical die stage. They can be very early die stage, early, early to mid die stage, up to late die stage or late to very late, and then very late die stage. Some die stages may be labeled up to as many as A through L. Some variety of attributors use an alphabetical stage labeling. Die state and die stage as die markers. The state of a die will change as it is used and can cause wear to be observed as the die wear progresses. An example of this wear, along with any intentional die refurbishing, can be evident as changes in the appearance of a mint mark. This change in die state will contribute to the progression of the die stage. Different die stages can present some different die markers as well as being die markers themselves. This is a 1960D large day memorial scent. Is, these are all the same repunishment mark number three, but this is an early stage B and stage F and stage G. Die stage can also be it can also describe the combination of obverse and reverse dies as die pairs. Different die pairs result from the changing of either an obverse die or a reverse die during the minting process. 
as the state of a die changes over time, there will come a time when that die will be changed in the minting press. <coughs> Both the obverse die and the reverse die are not always changed out together. Changing either an obverse die or a reverse die can create a new die stage and provide new die markers. Using die markers to speed up the hunt. If the variety hunter is searching brain uncirculated BU rolls of coins of the same denomination, same date, and mint, this method can help to speed up the hunt. This method will be most useful to the variety hunter that is not searching for mint errors. Mint errors are found by examining both sides of the coin. Starting the examination on the obverse and by taking note of die markers, such as abrasions around the area of the date or through liberty on the obverse, and then examining the reverse, and if no varieties exist on either side, then one can assume that there will be no varieties on any coins with those exact same obverse abrasions. When this is the case, each coin that you come across like this does not have to be flipped over to examine the reverse, thus saving a little time and effort. In one roll of BU coins of the same denomination date and mint, there may be several different die pairs with a handful of coins each. Taking note of each of the different die pairs in the roll will contribute to the, the saved time and effort. Here we will be comparing two coins, coin A and coin B. Taking note of abrasions on the first coin, here we're examining the areas of the obverse here in trust, liberty, and in the date. Here are the abrasions in the one and the nine of the date up in the trust. There's some die scratches and scratches and abrasions in this portion of the word liberty. So it takes a little bit of memory between coin to coin as you're searching through the roll to say, hey, I think I've seen this before and I did not find anything on the reverse of that coin. So here's the second coin, and we're finding the exact same abrasions on the second coin. So when we find this same abrasion or die markers, we can assume that the reverse will present no varieties there. That is not to say that a mint error could still exist on the reverse of this coin and the previous one. Mint errors occur regardless of the die. Die breaks, die scratches, die cracks, die cuts could be lurking on the back on the reverse of the coin. Here we're comparing the two coins in these areas. And in the word trust, In the same die abrasions and scratches in the word liberty. I hope this has helped some of you out in uh, speeding up the hunt. Happy hunting. In summary, in this presentation, we have discussed what die markers are, what is not a die marker, how die markers are utilized, types of die markers, detecting die markers, we demonstrated how to compare varieties and die markers to known varieties. Define die state versus die stage. How die state and die stage can be die markers and using die markers to speed up the hunt. Continue research and study is highly recommended in order to obtain additional detailed information and understanding. Here's a brief list of suggested online references.
Here's a brief list of some suggested printed publications.